The Rubble Cylinder Controller has seven main functions that set it apart from its competition. Multiple positioning, speed control, acceleration deceleration control, a pitch or incremental style move, the pause feature, the push and hold feature, and the zone output are all built-in functions that give the Robo Cylinder Controller high functionality and flexibility. This tutorial will discuss each function and de demonstrate how to implement them using the IEI Robo Cylinder software. The first function of the Robo Cylinder Controller is multi-positioning. A typical air cylinder can only move to two positions, extended and retracted. Getting more than two positions out of an air cylinder requires a lot of extra equipment. With the Robo Cylinder, you can store up to 512 different positions anywhere on the stroke of the actuator. Each position is repeatable up to plus or minus 0.02 millimeters. The number of positions available is set by the PIO pattern, which is set in parameter number 25. This chart here shows the standard ACON, PCON, and SCON PIO patterns. PIO patterns 0 through 3 need a binary input position number and a start pulse to move to the commanded position. Patterns 0 and 1 have 64 available positions, patterns 2 has 256 available positions, and pattern 3 has 512 available positions. PIO patterns number 4 and 5 are solenoid valve mode types, meaning there is a dedicated input for every position number. Pattern 4 has 7 available positions, and pattern 5 has 3 available positions. Using the RoboCylinder PC software, the position information is stored inside the position table. Each position gets a unique position number. The first column of the position table represents the location value in millimeters the actuator will move to. In positioning mode, the actuator will turn on a position complete output, PEND, when the actuator has reached within the position band of the top position. The position band defaults to 0.1 millimeters, meaning the position complete will come on when the actuator is within 0.1 millimeters of the top location. The second function of the robo cylinder is velocity control. On an air cylinder, the speed is determined by the line pressure and flow control valves and cannot be changed for different positions. With the robo cylinder, you can set different velocities for every top position. This allows you flexible control of the motion and you can even change speed on the fly. The velocity is set in the speed column of the position table. Every top position can have its own velocity. The velocity is set in millimeters per second. The Robo Cylinder can also change speeds on the fly simply by opening up the position band. In a position move, the position band column sets how tight of a tolerance to the actual top position to when the PEND or position complete output will turn on. If the position band is increased, the PEND output will turn on sooner, allowing the controller to command another position. If a position is commanded before the full motion is completed, it will move to the new top position without stopping. This allows for smooth transitions between positions, faster cycle times, and more flexibility in the system. The third function of the Robo Cylinder Controller is acceleration control. On an air cylinder, the speed is determined by the line pressure and flow control valves and cannot be changed for different positions. Because of this, air cylinders will slam into the end of stroke, causing part defects or damaging the actuator itself. With the Robo Cylinder Controller, you can set the acceleration and deceleration for every move. This allows you to have smooth start and stop motion, which causes less defects, gives you individual control for every position, and allows for longer actuator life. The acceleration and deceleration is set inside the position table. There is a separate column for acceleration and deceleration, so you can have a different ramp up speed than your ramp down speed. The fourth function of the Robo Cylinder Controller is a pitch or incremental type move. By setting a 1 in the absolute incremental column of the Robo Cylinder position table, the position will be set as an incremental or pitch type move. When this position is commanded, the actuator will increment the distance set in the position column from its current location. For example, if you have an application that needs a position taught every 10 millimeters, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, etc., 
Instead of teaching a position for every location, you can teach one incremental position of 10 millimeters and call this position five times or as many times as you need to. Every time the position is commanded, the actuator will move forward 10 millimeters. Using this feature can speed up programming and reduce the overall I.O. count. This function is impossible to do on an air cylinder. The fifth function of the robo cylinder is the pause or hold feature. A discrete input named star STP is designated as the stop or hold input. The star indicates reverse logic, meaning when this input is on, the actuator is not stopped or enabled. When this input turns off, the actuator will decelerate to a stop and hold position. When the input turns back on, the actuator will continue motion. If a reset is issued with the stop input off, it will cancel the rest of the motion. For example, the pause input can be used for infinite positioning. A stack of parts can be loaded onto a vertical robo cylinder with only two positions taut, fully retracted and fully extended. When told to move, the actuator will raise until the top part reaches a read sensor. The read sensor is wired into the hold input, telling the actuator to stop. The robo cylinder will pause until the top part is removed and the sensor is no longer made. When the hold input turns back on, the robo cylinder will continue the motion. This will repeat until the parts are empty. Try doing that with an air cylinder. The sixth function of the robo cylinder controller is the push and hold feature. As with air cylinders, the robo cylinder is capable of exerting force and maintaining that force for an indeterminate amount of time. Unlike an air cylinder, the robo cylinder controller can set the amount of force and the distance the push move is applied for. IAI stepper or pulse type motors, the ERC2, RCP2, and RCP3 series are best used for the push motion applications. Due to the nature of stepper motors, they can exert high force at low speeds. The amount of force the actuator will exert is set by a current limiting value. In the main robo cylinder catalog, starting on page 487, are force charts that equate the current percentage to the push force in newtons. A push move consists of two parts. The first part of the motion is the rapid advance, which will move the actuator to the location taught in the position column at the velocity and acceleration set for that position. When the actuator reaches this rapid advance location, it will slow down into a controlled 20 millimeter per second move and exert the force that is entered inside the push percentage column. The actuator will push with this set force for the distance that is set inside the position band column. Unlike a standard position move, the position complete output will turn on when the force or current value is met and is not location dependent like a standard positioning move. The actuator will maintain this force until commanded to another position. For example, the position data table here shows that the actuator will rapid advance to 100 millimeters at a speed of 300 millimeters per second and an acceleration rate of 0.3 g. When it reaches 100 millimeters, it will slow down and press with 50% of the motor current. It will press for a distance of 50 millimeters. So when all is said and done, the actuator will have moved 150 millimeters. The seventh and last function of the robo cylinder controller is the zone output. With most air cylinders, read switches are used to indicate actuator position information. Because all robo cylinder actuators use encoder technology, there is no need for external switches to indicate position information. A zone can be set up anywhere on the stroke of the actuator. When the actuator moves into the zone, an output will turn on. The zone can be set as small as the repeatability of the actuator, or as large as the entire stroke. There are two types of zone, the global zone and the position specific zone. The global zone is set inside the parameter file. Regardless of what the actuator is doing, if the location is within the set zone, the zone 1 output will turn on. The position specific zone is set in the position table for each individual position. The zone is specific to the position it is taught to, and the P zone output will only turn on when commanded to the position that the zone has been taught to. The P zone feature works great in conjunction with the push move. Since the PEND output comes on when the force is met, a P zone can be used to indicate that the force was met at the right location. 
This video shows the zone output in conjunction with a press move. The actuator will rapid advance and then press into the blue block. When the press force is met, the position complete light will illuminate. There is also a P-zone that has been set for this application. When the actuator is within the set zone, the zone light will turn on. In order for it to be a good part, we need to see both the zone output as well as the position complete output. If one is seen without the other, it indicates either the part is too small or too big. We have now gone over the seven functions of the RoboCylinder controller. Multiple positioning, speed control, acceleration deceleration control, pitch or incremental type moves, the pause and hold feature, and the push and hold feature, as well as the zone output. You should now be able to use the RoboCylinder software to implement these seven functions. If you have any questions, please contact your local IAI office.